Joining us now, Joe Tacapina, one of the attorneys representing Donald Trump. Mr. Tacapina, good morning to you. Good morning, Savannah. What was the president's reaction when told by his lawyers of this indictment? You know, despite all the scuttlebutt and rumors and whatnot, we believed and hoped that rule of law would have prevailed. So he initially was, was shocked. After we got over that, um, he, he, you know, he put a notch on his belt and he, uh, you know, he decided we have to fight now, and and he got into a, you know, a typical Donald Trump posture where he's ready to to be combative on on something that he believes is an injustice. Um, his knees don't buckle, Savannah. So I, I think uh, he's now in the posture that he's he's ready to fight this. Have you been told anything about when this indictment may be unsealed, and you and the rest of the public will have a look at what these charges actually are? You know, not definitively, Savannah. We're talking about early next week, um, but th that day hasn't been set yet. Might, likely Tuesday, but again, that's still to be determined. Have you been told anything about the nature of the charges in this indictment? No, I mean specifically, no. Uh, we don't know how many counts. We don't know what the the the, the actual charges are, um, but we do know it centers around, uh, you know, illegal. A very common confidentiality agreement that was signed years and years ago um, with uh, Stormy Daniels and between her attorneys and, and, and Michael Cohen. Uh, those were the parties to the uh, confidentiality agreement. Um, so it's nothing more than that, which is really what makes this shocking. Uh, this is a historic case, a monumental case, a case that will have wide reaching um, ramifications. And it, it really, today, in, I, I feel very concerned about the rule of law in this country because it endangers the rule of law for all Americans. Today it's Donald Trump, tomorrow it's a Democrat, uh, the day after it's, uh, I don't know, your friend, uh, the day after that, it's you or me. And that's what concerns me. When a prosecutor can use the law and the system to go after a political opponent, it's something that frightens me. Well, we don't yet know, in fairness, what these charges are and what the substance is behind them. There is a report that there are 30-plus well, we, we charges. What do you make of that number, if it's correct? It, it, if, if it's correct, um, it means they've taken each transaction, each check, each payment, each entry, and made it a separate charge. Um, I still think it's going to all rise and fall uh, on the issue of um, this settlement agreement, a very legal, very common settlement agreement, um, and, and how it applies to campaign finance laws, Savannah. Remember, that's where we are here. Um, the only other precedent that's even remotely close is the John Edwards case, which was prosecuted by federal authorities because it was a federal election. It was prosecuted because there was a donor involved, as opposed to using personal funds he like here. Um, and, and in that case, the Justice Department ultimately dismissed that case when they couldn't get a conviction. Um, and that was federal prosecutors who, in this case, turned this down. Um, the FEC, the Federal Election Committee, I've spoken to chairmen there, they turned this down. Um, they said there is no crime. Yet, somehow a state prosecutor who doesn't even have jurisdiction over the federal elections is prosecuting a case. It, it, it makes it obvious as to why, and it's um, it's very concerning. Well, and again, we don't yet know what the, what the legal theory is, but there is, of course, wide speculation that campaign finance may be what brings it into the, the realm of a felony conviction. This has to do with falsification of business <clears throat> records, and I know we don't have at the time or the facts to litigate it here, but one point of clarification, right. I wonder if you can clear it up for me. These, these legal services that this all centers around these payments that were made to Stormy Daniels being called legal services and whether that was true or not here's my question where on the books of the Trump organization was that written did it ever go to any third party or was this just strictly internal That's business records Savannah, that's a great, really a great question. It's actually, I think, the first time I've been asked that the last month. <laughs> that's the point. They were internal business records. They were not filed. They, they, look, there was no tax deduction taken here, which initially was the theory of this case when they put it in the grand jury two years ago. No tax deduction taken. And secondly, there was no obligation to file this with the FEC. If there were, that would be a different story. Can you imagine if Donald Trump paid for this settlement agreement with campaign funds, alleging it was part of a, you know, something to, to enhance the campaign or help the campaign? They would be baying for his scalp so these morning. business records, um, I just so want to make sure we're clear as, a, yeah, clear as day, whether it's campaign finance or anything, these business records were solely internally only for the Trump organization, no, no IRS, no third party, no insurance company, no one else on the outside of the Trump organization ever relied on these records that were called falsely legal services. 
I wouldn't say falsely, but that's another issue we can debate later if you'd like or right now. Um, but but yes, you're, the answer to your initial question is you are correct. No one else relied on them. No one else had to rely on them. This was a personal um, resolution for a personal matter that would have been made irrespective of the campaign. So with those facts together, there is no crime. This is not even a bad act. A couple quick things. Uh, do you expect the president to voluntarily surrender? Will he come for his arraignment? We're working out those logistics right now, Savannah. I mean, absolutely. I mean, he's not going to uh, hole up in, in Mar-a-Lago. So we'll, he'll face this, and we'll face it, and uh, we'll be successful, I'm sure. Do you expect this to go to trial? Do you see any scenario in which you or the former president would take a plea deal? Zero. Zero. First of all, I'm not taking a plea deal to anything, but, but uh, you know, President Trump will not take a plea deal in this case. It's not going to happen. There's no crime. I don't know if it's going to make the trial because we have substantial legal challenges that we have to, to front before we get to that point. Long road ahead. Joe Tacopina, thank you for your time this morning. Good to see you. Thanks, Savannah. Bye-bye. Hey, thanks for watching. Don't miss the Today Show every weekday at 11 a.m. Eastern, 8 Pacific on our streaming channel, Today All Day. To watch, head to today.com slash all day or click the link right here.